Hey guys, it's the Mad Master here. I know you've all missed me and it's been a while since my last video, so here it is. Another video. Anyways, what have I been up to uh, other than fucking 67 Gold Tops Mom? Uh, who is one of my trolls on this channel, by the way? Um, well, a lot of stuff other than butt-fucking her and uh, thinking about smashing his face in with a fucking uh, steel bar because... I hate to give uh, credence to trolls. I guess I'm feeding the troll. He's probably a miserable person anyway, so he can fucking go jerk off to Jimmy Page or whatever. Just because I dared in one of my videos early on to diss Jimmy Page, sort of half-assed diss him because I like other guitars from the 70s more, like Uli John Roth. Excuse the fuck out of me! Anyways, and I said he was a plagiarist, which in some respects he was, and he was a good producer, and he was a good... Uh, guitarist to some extent. I just think there are others that were better. And I like Led Zeppelin. I hold them into uh, high regard, but that doesn't mean that I think that they're the be all end all of hard rock in the 70s. I think they were very influential and they deservedly had respect, but they, there's, you know, I, I have a nuanced opinion about it. So, whatever. The guy, you know, called me all sorts of names and shit and whatever. I mean, he's fucking miserable. If you have to do that, you're a miserable person. You have a lot of psychological issues. I don't really do that to people on their channel, so... Whatever. But anyways... So, speaking of really crazy bullshit ideas and opinions... I'm going to talk today about organized religion. And... How to defeat it, so to speak. But... I don't know if this is going to defeat organized religion, but it can defeat a lot of... It could be an example of how to fight organized religion in a better way than a lot of, what a lot of people do. So, one thing I noticed about a lot of, let's, let's say, Christians, first of all, first off, is that a lot of them have this idea that they're a miserable person, so they have these problems, and then Jesus is the savior on them, and so they become obsessed with this idea that Jesus is the savior of their life. And one thing I notice is that the more you kind of push them into rationality and thought, and I'm not an atheist, by the way, I might want to add. I'm more of agnostic, leading towards kind of some new age philosophies, dare I say. <laughs> but uh, one of the things about Christians is that they do not have this idea of rationality. You know, they, they don't, they jump through hoops and, you know, backpedal and, and go into circles with the, all these, a lot of these ideas. <laughs> so I just happen to know that when you're dealing with people that are of a certain faith like that, one of the things to watch out for is that they, you know, they're trying to suck you in. Whether it be a cult, let's say it's a cult or it's Christianity or anything. One of the things that they do, one of the things more, most uh, religions have in common is that humanity is flawed. Uh, people are fucked up. It's a fallen world, you know, all these things. So... I hate to bring this into it, but you know, like I was been reading a lot of Christopher Hitchens and watching a lot of his videos and stuff. But I think he just, I think he went the wrong way about attacking organized religion after a while. I like a lot of his books and his writings and stuff, but one of the things that, one of the most important things to fight organized religion, or at least I think is a, a good strategy, is by living by example. So, what do I mean by this? Well, as you already know, you know, a lot of people get into like AA or these treatment programs or psychological programs or programs or whatever. And a lot of times they go born again Christian. So I think this is one of the things that they, you know, they have a monopoly on a lot of this stuff. Like you've, you hear about these rock stars, like let's say, let's say Dave Mustaine, for example, or Alice Cooper, you know, they go Christian and, you know, they try to become this moral person, so so to speak, because they don't have control over their own lives. They they don't see as they're, they think that, and a lot of times they think that the world is out of control. So they need this Christianity or religion to grab onto and, you know, 
guide them in the way that they need to be. So one of the things that I think about with organized religion is by living as an example of someone that doesn't need organized religion and has a great life or is happy, has is psychologically well adjusted. And that is something that it poses a challenge for a lot of people that are trying to suck you into a cult, you know, even Scientology. It's like you take that psychology test or whatever they have, the Oxford capacity, whatever the fuck they call it. And you're like, oh, it's, it's rigged that you're gonna, always going to have problems. But if you go into a Scientology, uh, you know, recruitment center and say, and just tell them, oh, I'm happy with my life, blah, 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 blah. It's like, they'll probably just be like, they'll probably like explode. Like they'll fucking like uh, short circuit. Like what? What? Oh, uh, you know, it's like a robot that's stuck in a loop or something, you know? So I think it's the same thing with Christianity and maybe even Islam. I'm not as familiar with, with how Islam recruits its members and a lot of these other religions. But I know that there's that presupposition with organized religion that humanity's flawed, that the world is a hellish place and, you know, the hereafter is the only way to go, you know, only place where we're going to go is that's going to be better. So that just that just shows a very negative view of the world, in my opinion. And I've already done you know some commentary on this on this channel. So I think one of the things you can do, obviously, is living a better life, and also, you know, being an example of someone that doesn't criticize things too much. Be being a person that doesn't criticize people's religion, because it just shows you that you have you know it's like. Uh, if you're criticizing someone for any reason, they're, they're, it just shows you that you have too much time on your hands for one, like 67 gold tops, for example. <laughs> but anyways, um, you have too much time on your hands, and you have, you know, you have this negative, uh, this negative thing in your life that you have to, you know, remark upon other people's ideas or faiths, faiths, and you know that's one of the things that's been challenging for me is trying to try and accept people for what they believe, which has taken me a long time. So now I try to accept it instead of just like resisting it. And by being who I am, trying to be a more positive person and believing what I believe, I can show people that are into like fun, you know, evangelical Christianity or into these cults or whatever, that I'm an example of a person that's not in their cult or not in their belief system that's doing well. I'm not doing the best in life, but I'm just saying that by striving for that, I can be that example. Another thing that is very prevalent in Christianity, especially in, you know, Islam or in a lot of religious ideas and, and sex and so forth is, are these ideas of sexual purity. So basically, you know, they have these ideas that it's immoral to have casual sex, blah, 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 blah. So they have these ideas that people that partake in any kind of lifestyle that's different than theirs or different than a committed relationship is is a flawed person or, you know, they're going to face consequences. Not only hell, but like on this planet, like, oh, they're so dirty and gross. Blah, blah, blah. So one of those things, one of the ways to combat that is just be, you know, be a normal person and, you know, have... You don't have to be extreme, but yeah, you yeah maybe maybe you're uh, someone that has casual sex a lot, or maybe you have these weird fetishes or whatever. But you're not like all weird about it. You're open about it, but it's not like some kind of uh, it doesn't seem like some obsession that takes over your life or addiction. You know, I talk about porn addiction. You know, Utah has I I've heard somewhere I don't know if this is true, but Utah is like the highest views of porn in the nation has like the highest views and this doesn't surprise me because they're repressed sexuality sexuality with uh, their religion and most of the anti-porn organizations I know out there are Mormon based so it doesn't surprise me but that's one of those things that you can do so you know I have a few, I know a few people that believe in this sexual purity ideas and all, and so forth and you know I know, and I know other people that are normal, well-adjusted people that may not may not be Christian. They may be atheists. They may be agnostic. They may be somewhat Christian, but they have sex outside of marriage. They have a boyfriend and a girlfriend. They're normal fucking people. You know, they have these 
normal relationships, get married, whatever. And, you know, you could point that out when you, people say, I'm not going to have sex until I'm married. Uh, it's like, well, what about this person? They did this. They're, they didn't end up with AIDS or fucking, you know, whatever, you know. Or they're not burning in hell right now. They're in a loving marriage. But they had sex with, you know, 20 people before they got married because they had boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever. So you can just point out these examples of people that are living a normal life, well-adjusted life, without needing uh, the bullshit religion. And that's one of the things that really, I think, is what I'm driving at with this video. Because if you go out there and are just super judgmental towards other other beliefs or religions, you know, you're just going to look like a jackass. Kind of like gold top or 67 gold tops. But, um, <laughs> keep mentioning that, that troll on my channel. Um, anyways, so that's really all I got to say about this subject. I think, uh, I think normalcy and, you know, civilization and science and rationality and calm reasoned approach and a, a calm reasoned approach to thinking and debating is the way to combat fanaticism. You know, that's... So, that I, one last thing, actually, I'm going to say about that is that, you know, I have debates with people. Oh, well, maybe, like, uh, you know, may, we got to stop the fascists. Oh, maybe militant, mil, being militant against uh, whoever is, is the right idea. It's like, no, I think calm, reasoned debate makes you look better in the end. So when someone's in a debate with you and they're just saying these crazy fucking ideas... I'm not even talking about religion necessarily. They look like a fool. You know, if you really are a good debater and you're, you know, stand your ground, they look like a fool. So that's what I got to say about organized religion. I think organized religion is one of the worst things on this planet. It's done a lot of good too, you know, in some ways, but it's done a lot of bad. And I think we need to move on from the way organized religion has had its uh, stranglehold on the world. That's all, and please subscribe.